So diving right into it, the first thing we want to talk about is understanding your education. Now, with this market and this day and age, a lot of people are just expecting a computer science degree. There's not many people like getting a lot of jobs through boot camps or being self-taught. That's kind of a thing in the past, but I'm not saying it's impossible, but you got to understand where your education is, including a computer science degree. Now, if you have a computer science degree, that doesn't mean you will get the job right away. You have to understand that college and like a degree is like just the foundational knowledge. The foundational knowledge allows you to be trained at a job. It doesn't mean that you know how to do the job yet. Be fully aware that whoever's taking you on as a junior engineer is going to have to train you and mentor you about how to build software in a professional setting. It's completely different and it, it branches off the foundational knowledge that you get from a computer science degree, for example, but you have to understand that your first job is gonna be one where you will be needing to do a lot of learning on the job and you will have to try your hardest to continue that path of education past just what you did in the past. There's a lot more growth after you get that first job. Okay, the second section I wanna talk about how to kind of understand the process. So understanding the process of getting an engineering job is pretty specific and it's kind of difficult to go through the process. But if you know what to expect, that will help you calm your nerves and know what to do for each one of these steps. Usually the first step in any interview process is gonna be a smoke test to make sure that you are kind of what they're saying, what you're saying in your resume. They want to make sure that like it's probably by an HR person or a recruiter, but they just want to see that like, yes, that you, you kind of know what you're talking about, but this is not the, the first phone call is never the one where they're really testing out your knowledge yet. They just want to make sure that they understand where you're coming from and what your resume says. The next step in the process will be the first little taster of how to like test your skills and see what you know. And this usually comes in the form of maybe a, a take home project or they will have you uh, pair online where they will give you a coding test and tell you uh, to try to finish a task in an hour. This is usually like elite style uh, coding problems where they will try to see how you react giving the requirements and what kind of solution you come up with. If you pass that phase, that's when they get more serious and then you have the opportunity to usually go through almost like a panel interview. And this is where things get really serious and they can, sometimes last an entire day. Now, traditionally uh, in the past, what I've had to do is there would be probably three to six hours of interviews where you're meeting with five to 10 people in each hour chunk. And each one of those is, is giving you questions about your history or giving you another coding test and then another like maybe systems test, but different areas so that different parts of the team can test the knowledge that you have and see how you work under pressure, essentially. And after that, that's mostly the, the end of the process, typically. They can change their minds, they can add on new layers. Nowadays, because the employer kind of has the power, they can really string you out for as long as they want. But usually that long panel interview is gonna be the, the final stage and they'll determine whether or not they want to hire you. Now that you know kind of like the gist of like what the hiring process looks like, and it can help you prepare and also like prepare for each step of the journey when you're interviewing for these jobs. Okay, so now the next step, I wanna talk about how you try to get those interviews in the first place. How do you find the jobs and find the inside track to get the job in the first place, to get that first interview? And the best way, no matter what part of your career, is to get a referral. Now referrals, they, especially for brand new engineers, referrals work great because the person that is referring you will vouch that you know some stuff that you can work hard. It's more of like a character witness of like how well you're gonna do, even though you don't have any experience to speak of. So a lot of people may at this point be like, well, I just started, I don't have like any way to get referrals. And honestly, that's not, that's not true. See, when it comes to referrals, they're usually gonna happen through your network. And even when you're coming right out of college or through any sort of your studies, however you've gotten to this stage, you have a network, you just don't kind of realize it. It doesn't have to be people that are software engineers already. It can be anyone that you went to school with, that you had classes with, that you had uh, on a coding project before, that you're trying to keep in touch with, any people's like even just siblings and family that may have like an, uh, someone that is in a company that you know someone that knows someone, that can turn into a referral. Now, 
I want you to be really creative here and think about people that are in your life, no matter where it is, and seeing where you can find other people that have like-minded professional jobs where you can find a way to get into their company through a referral. This is always worth the time. And even though I know that most people are still going to be applying to cold apply on job boards and anything that pops up that interests them, it's always worth the effort of trying to get that referral and expand your own network and try to find ways to go through the back door. All right, so this next section is kind of geared to 2025 and 2024 for that matter, is that there's been, after COVID, there's this is a little history lesson, after, uh, during COVID, like almost everyone went remote. And that was just kind of the, the status quo of everyone wanting to go uh, work remotely because of the, the pandemic. But however, uh, in the past year or so is that there has been a push for people to come on site. So more local businesses want to hire people that are local. Now, whether you like, like it or not, that's just the reality of things that people are trying to return to office. I think it's really important to really consider these kind of jobs because there's a lot of benefits of being on, especially when you're very new to the job of being on site. So trying to find jobs that are in your local city or a nearby city that you're willing to move to, those are all worth considering because of the benefit of being on site and being able to ramp up in this first job. You kind of have to do whatever it takes to get this first job. And I am, I'm predicting, I'm saying that there's a trend that there's going to be more um, doors that will open to you when you're local and you're able to come on site. Can you still find a remote job? Yes, but I'm just saying consider and look at the local companies and see what you can do there. All right, this next section, I want to talk about the different kinds of jobs. Now, nearly everyone that goes into computer science, they have these big dreams, and a lot of people try to expect or really wish they can work for these FANG companies. Facebook, Meta, Apple, Amazon, uh, Network, Google, like all these big, huge companies. I want to set everyone straight here. Most of you won't get in. There's such a high demand of people trying to get into those jobs. Congratulations if you make it, but just don't pin all of your hopes and dreams on finding and landing those jobs. They are very high in demand, and a lot of people that, that do get in have some, some level of advantage or more experience than their competitors, and that's how they're able to get in. Don't write yourself off, but at the same time, don't hold your breath for getting those jobs, if you know what I mean. So with that being said, I need people to really think about, focus on the boring companies. So instead of like finding the job that really catches your eye, that sounds really exciting, maybe they're doing stuff with AI, maybe they're doing a, a bunch of internet of things where the work honestly sounds super exciting and fascinating. Uh, those jobs are gonna have a lot of competition, but a lot of companies need software work even though they're extremely boring. In those areas, you can learn an incredible amount and have a better chance of trying to find that first interview. So just think of things like insurance. Anything that like is a white collar job will have some level of in-house software talent. And if you can find a job to get your first job in sort of those kind of boring companies, that's a good way to approach you know, the beginning of your career. For this next section, I wanna talk about how to like expand your network, but in a way that will also again give you experience. And that is basically to try to help as many people as you can. If there's people that you are working with that have a small business or like they are already a software engineer or they like have some level of like need and they have like a part of their job and part of their day that really sucks to do repetitive work, offer to do some software work to build up a tool, to build up some uh, sort of way to make their lives easier will help you not only like grow this network, but also give you some real hands-on experience from like taking requirements from users. And you can slap that on your resume. You can put that as your freelancing experience for just like helping other people. You want to try to find ways to help people as much as you can. And even if what you wrote, what software that you work doesn't really, you know, finish or do the job that they need to do precisely, it gives you a lot of experience right out of the gate and you don't need the full-time job to get that. You can do that alongside of the job hunt so that you can try to attack from all different fronts. Okay, so for this last piece of advice, I want to kind of uh, give some advice that may uh, ruffle some feathers or upset some people. And my idea is that um, I think this is going to be a trend in the future. So you just got to hear me out. Is that when you have a computer science degree or you've gone into and gained all these skills as a web developer or as a software engineer, maybe consider getting a job that is not software engineering, is not web development. 
The thing is, is that that is a way to kind of find a backdoor. So whenever you are a web developer or a software engineer, you will need to know a lot about the business, how they store data, how they process uh, transactions, how they control all the data and the flow of their business. Well, you'll have to know the business itself. I've seen a bunch of brilliant engineers not start off as a software engineer, they will start off as a, just a random white collar job, a business analyst, an accountant, and then they like do a lateral move into the engineering department. They are some of the most excellent engineers I've ever seen because the fact they have the skills and they also know the domain very well. And when you have those together, that is just like a power combo for you to rocket up through your career and advance inside of that company. So if you're having a hard time trying to find like software engineering jobs and you're just really focused on becoming a programmer, maybe don't. Maybe consider like other like white collar jobs that require a college degree. But when you have a software degree, when you're able to code and you enter in these jobs, you kind of have a superpower to be able to understand how data works, how software works how web development works, you can provide much more value to a team than anyone that had like maybe a communications degree and they just went into this, uh, uh, this field for just, you know, just a random professional job. If you can do that, you can also think of a way to get back into engineering through a lateral move inside of the company. There's no shame in that. And that's also something that you could gain skills for the future part of your career as well. So in summary, that's the kind of mentorship and the, the guidance I give to people that are breaking into the industry and try to think outside the box and not just really hyper-focus on you know, becoming a programmer and just submitting resumes all day. There can be a lot of different ways to approach finding a job and usually just submitting a cold application is the least effective way. So when you're able to think about your network, expanding your skills, trying to build for people, or even finding the back door through a job that's not a programmer, you will find more success and maybe even more fulfillment in your career when you go about it from all angles. I hope this brings some value to people that are hunting up for the job because I know that you know just getting into this field at, uh, in 2024, soon to be 2025, is a difficult journey, but it is possible. You just got to be patient. You got to think outside the box and you got to network and you got to find ways to advance yourself and the people around you. Okay, so if you like this video, I know that you're probably like this one as well. And if you made it all the way to the end of the video, please put a cat emoji in the comments so I can thank you directly for watching the video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much.